sometimes. The easiest solution, the simplest solution, is God's way. God doesn't make it real complicated for us, you know. Jesus said, the yoke is easy, and my burden is light. He said that we could come to him with all of our, our needs, with our wants, with our cares, with our concerns, with our issues, you know, that we might have with ourselves, much less with other people or other things. And he said, anyone that came to him, he would in no wise cast out. So, being that he's God, and the Son of God, and that he chose to live this life and experience it as we have, that making him the Son of Man, then he is able to understand where we're coming from. But him also being the Son of God, he is able to give us the solution for what we're going through because he's been in our shoes. Now, I know a lot of people don't think that because they think, well, you know, he was God or, you know, he was different. Well, no, he, he knows what you're going through. So if you feel like you're all alone, somehow you're left out, you know, counseling, whenever I counseled someone, they always had these personal issues, you know, it's always focused on me, 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 my issue, my, 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 what they're doing. And one thing I learned pretty quickly was it really wasn't about them because whatever they described was always kind of variable. It could change. You know, it was always the same issues, but it was just different people. Same situation, just different circumstance, you know. Always seemed to be something very basic to human nature. And God seemed to always have the same solution. He seemed to always be saying to do something that they hadn't thought to do, that once they did it, they usually were healed. Now, did the circumstance alleviate itself or did God move? Don't know. But here's what the solution is that I always found. Whatever it is you want, you give. Now, <laughs> that doesn't sound right. Yeah, I know. You could try it. Now, the same thing I found was true, like when someone was like, oh, I don't know, wanting to be loved, then if you found them a situation where they could give love to someone, even though they wanted to be loved instead, then for what they wanted to get, if they learned how to give, somehow their problem disappeared. Now, I know that doesn't make sense to you. Maybe. Maybe it does. But we used to call it the, the law of spiritual dynamics. <laughs> we used to say, if you want to get, you give. Whatever you want, give it away, and you get it. And that may be a Jesus freakish kind of, kind of mindset, but it works. <laughs> you know? and, oh well. Now, you know, don't go into the money angle because that's stupid. You know, I mean, I don't believe it. You know, I think tithes and offerings, I mean, offerings, one thing. Tithing, I think that's, you know, that was animals and, you know, we're not going to go into money. So, you know, I'm not going to get into this whole exchange barter thing, you know, on how money could be part of it or whatever, because that's all corrupted. But, you know, offerings, well, you know, you could get into a teaching. The point about giving and getting is that if you're going through loneliness, Find someone else that's lonely, and then help them. You won't be lonely anymore. If you find someone that's depressed, or if you, I should say, if you're depressed, find someone else that's depressed. Help them. You won't be depressed anymore. If you're hurting, find someone that's hurting. You see, as a Christian, there's something about two people in the same situation, that God seems to step in the midst of them and does something miraculous with at least one of them. Because one of the two is going to come out of it. You know, God is going to bless them by being able to be a light in that circumstance, a situation where he can be the wellspring of salvation to the other person. And for me, you know, whenever I was like, you know, kind of bummed out, 
then I would go find people that were bummed out and share with them. <laughs> you know, it's not a mutual misery or finding people, you know, to be a comfort zone of comparing miseries, but there is a means that if you, like I said, give to them what you want, not get from them what you want. Notice the difference. Then you can't really commiserate in misery because you're trying to bring them out of it, even though you're not there. So try it and see. See if the Lord doesn't give you what you want if you give what he wants first. The law of supply. The first law of giving is of the spirit world. Give to all you meet or whose lives touch yours of your prayers, your time, yourselves, your love, your thought, whatever. You must practice this kind of giving first. Then give of this world's goods and money as you have them given to you. To give money and material things without having first made the habit daily, hourly, or ever increasingly of giving on the higher plane is wrong. Start spiritually. Give and give and give all your best to whoever, whenever, and however someone needs it. Be great givers, because as you give, you'll get. But only start with the spiritual part, and you'll find that God will lead you in the rest. Give as I said my Father in heaven gives. He who makes his sun to shine on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. Remember, as I have told you before, give according to need, never according to desert, or whether they deserve it or not. In giving, with the thought of supplying a real need, you most closely resemble that Father in heaven, the great giver, our Father. As you receive, you must supply the need of those I bring to you, not questioning, not limiting, their nearness to you and their relationship must never count. Only their need is to guide you. Pray and become great givers. You know, there is a balance, too, where some people think that, well, you know, if I give, i got to you know, share the gospel with them. You know, no, you don't. You just help. Be there in time of need, and believe me, when they have a time of want, they'll come to you for, for Jesus and for the gospel sake. But you first have to prove that you care. And the way you do is by being there. So if you care, then don't just share, but give the best that you can. Because that's what Jesus did for you. He gave himself for you.